Already? Can we start? Yeah? Well, tonight, uh, Rolf and I, we would like to uh, talk a little bit about kites. And uh, I will give uh, some more general introduction, some of the history. And Rolf will uh, talk somewhat about recent uh, research which we are doing. Uh, but the most important thing for me with kites is it falls within the category of playing with nature rather than against. And that is what you, which I think I enjoy, you know, rather than having the industrial revolution which always has, uh, you know, uh, excluded nature in its influences. Uh, with a kite you are playing with the game with nature in a win-win situation. But just to introduce uh, Rolf, this is at Scheveningen, and there's a little camera in his kite, and this shows you a little bit about the kind of person he is. Tomorrow we would like to place a ca camera in the kite which is now up uh, in front of the ship. The water is, I think, 10 centimeters deep, huh? yeah. or maybe a little more, yeah. but not much more. Yeah. Anyhow, kites are getting really serious nowadays. I mean, we know sky sails, uh, which is propel propelling uh, large ships. Uh, we have done similar studies at Delft with, uh, with students uh, already several years ago. We would like to have a whole series of kites and uh, these kites are all designed that they fit in a container and so you can put a container with an open lid on top of all the other containers and take some kites out. That was the idea. Um, we also have an idea which we call the ladder mill. There's uh, lots of kites which run into a loop uh, and they collect the wind power from aloft. I will talk more about that. But before going into the present development of kites, I would like to talk a little bit about some of the histories because I think many people are not aware of this. Uh, first of all, kites are very, very old. Already 9,000 to 5,000 before Christ, kite drawings uh, have been found and kites apparently were made. And uh, in the Polynesian Pilon uh, areas, w kites were used for fishing, for, for propelling fishing uh, hooks. And, and this is a similar thing which we like to do with a fishing net. Um, in China, you know, very many kites already existed. This is the standard kite uh, shape, but you also had the dragon kites, and uh, this is then the head with many, many uh, small kites behind it. In fact, uh, Marco Polo, he was the one who uh, came back on his journey to China and telling us in Europe about kites. And uh, it is uh, said that Marco Polo was one of the introdu introductions in Europe uh, of kites, but the kites originated from, uh, from China. Uh, one of the um, researchers which uh, is quite famous uh, because he wrote a whole book, is uh, George Pocock, about navigation in the air using kites or what he called buoyant sails, you know, floating sails, which is, uh, and uh, he made drawings like this. I don't know how clearly you can see, but here you see that, uh, that a sloop is propelled by kites, several kites behind each other. And here you have a wreck, and they have a big kite, and then on the kite they, p they just transport man to the shore, which uh, I don't think this is really going to work, but it was a very nice idea. Talking about nice ideas, this, uh, you know, a little uh, uh, carriage with, uh, with a kite, which is propelled by a kite, and here you see the engineering drawing. I mean, this is really interesting. Uh, kites were used for uh, weather research, uh, you know, uh, looking at temperatures and wind speeds. Uh, uh, Eddie was the one who, who designed this kite. It's now big, pretty famous. That was the standard kite, which you, at least if you talk about the Netherlands was, uh, was thought. And the invention of Eddie was to, to bend the horizontal bar uh, into an arc, which makes the kite stable. Here you see the bending of the arc. And here you see that uh, William Eddy, that uh, he just put many kinds behind each other, and um, he, uh, he was able to go at a, at a high altitude and making uh, observations. Again, 
of temperature and wind. Um, the, what is an interesting thing is to use the kite and to use uh, the line, which is from, from steel, and they used then the kite as an antenna. And so um, this was uh, done with, uh, with uh, Mitchell to use the kite to, uh, to send more s signals uh, using the, the line of the kite as a, uh, as a uh, how do you call it, as, a, as the antenna itself. Um, there were observatories, real serious observatories using kites, and, uh, and uh, uh, this kite has reached also uh, a, a very high altitude. It was a, a series of kites, I must say. You know, you had the first kite of 10 square meters, and then uh, another second of five, and then six kites of eight. And so the flying line was made with heavy piano wire, uh, 50 kilometers long, and the kites reached an altitude of almost 10,000 meters. That was not an official record, but it is uh, recorded uh, as such and and it our university and in particular our institute we have still a plan to uh, to break this record with a uh, advanced kite to go to higher altitude uh, research was done in lightning and uh, there's a famous story about benjamin franklin who had a kite which uh, burned up because of uh, lightning and so he understood that this was uh, something which had to do with electrical current um, there was uh, an interesting um, use of the kite, again, as an antenna to have the first uh, transatlantic wireless signal by having a Morse code by a large antenna to go all the way across the, uh, the Atlantic. Um, then you got the development with uh, men lifting kites, uh, in particular the Godi kite. Uh, you see here a, a big kite and, and here, um, how do you call it? Um, a Bag with uh, with three people with three people in there, and uh, here you see another one, Baden Pole, and uh, they were all using a whole series of kites. Here you see a man which is lifted, and the reason was that, uh, that to give you more security. You know, if you have one kite, you normally don't know really what it does, but more kites give you more security. Uh, to show you how large kites uh, were made those days, I mean they were able to make very large box kites, and uh, they were really stable. Um, what also maybe is not so much known is that the Wright brothers, they started with their airplanes to use them or lift them as kites to see what they would do. They pull them up as a kite and then they release the rope and see how they would fly. That's uh, how they started. Well, um, of course you have the modern kites and I will not say more about the modern kites because that's typically something about uh, which uh, Rolf can discuss. Um, there are... Uh, many kites which are very close to parachutes, and in fact, uh, a lot of developments were done by NASA, uh, by this uh, Rogala wing, which was inflatable, in fact, and uh, this is the NASA wing, which many people may know today, and uh, you can use those wings as parachutes as well. Um, then we have these kites, and as you know, this kite is the what we call the sled kite, which is now uh, still in front of the ship. And then you had the kite surfing, and this was uh, very well in the old days, uh, 1980. And uh, this has been really changed a lot. But to go back to, um, to the more uh, application of kites, uh, here you see the Beluga project. And in fact, it was extremely nice day before yesterday to have a Beluga ship, in fact, passing by here, which I could discuss with the captain about the, uh, the use of kites. And he was uh, very enthusiastic in his ideas, and it uh, was very good to, to do that. But to go back to our basic research, um, this is a record of uh, the Dutch wind profile above the middle of the country, which is the, the build in Kenemai. Each day at 12 o'clock, a weather balloon is, is, is released, and each night at 12 o'clock also. And when this weather balloon goes up, they measure the wind and the direction and also other parameters like temperature and moisture. But from the wind, I could make the statistics uh, of 20 years and see that at an altitude of about 500 meters, the average wind force is four. On the ground, it's almost zero. On 2,000 meters, it's six. And it increases to about wind force nine at nine kilometers altitude. That is average. That means that there is at that altitude roughly five kilowatt per square meter available as power, as wind power. That's, that's an enormous amount. And the idea which we have is that we work on what I call the third generation kite. 
uh, or windmill. Here you have the first generation, which is like uh, the old Dutch windmill, uh, typically 50 kilowatt. Now we work with the typical one megawatt wind turbines. But I would like to have a series of geits which go up to high altitude and come down, and this they just use or collect, exploit the energy which is at high altitude. The principle is as follows. You basically combine the airplane knowledge with, with the kites. Now, everybody knows that, that a kite in itself, if you look at the forces of a kite, that a kite pulls, and if you release slowly the line, the kite will go up, and it still keeps pulling. And by pulling a drum, you can just see it, that it drives basically the drum. It could drive a generator and give you electricity. But when the kite goes up, sorry, when the kite goes up, it pulls very strong. And when it is high up, you can ask yourself, now how do you get it down? Well, a kite goes easy up, but an airplane goes easy down. In fact, an airplane doesn't need any extra energy or any extra power to go down. It will go down like a glider. So the principle is that you make the wing in an attitude that it pulls strong while going up, and in another attitude, nose down, when it goes just doesn't pull and it flies down. And here you see how that looks like when you have hundreds of wings on a continuous loop going up and going down, not pulling, while going up, pulling, and on the ground, you have a big wheel and there you have a generator. That is the original idea of the ladder mill. Here you see how this would look at the top. You could also make it something like this here with two kites and have a winch on the bottom and have one kite pulling strong, the other one not pulling. This one goes down, this one goes up. And then, you know, when this is down, it reverses. This one starts pulling and goes up and you get like a pumping guide, something like that. You can also do it this way with kites which more look like the surf kites. And there are all kinds of ideas. Even this weird idea where you have lots of kites which go up, but then when they go up, they just don't go back. They just release themselves and they fly wherever they want to go, maybe to another place. And you keep on continuously putting kites here. You get energy and you get your transport for free also. So it's all beautiful playing with nature. Now uh, this is a concept where you have a pumping kite system which goes up and then comes down and you're on the ground you have your energy station. Now if you can... Here you see the kite coming out, the line while they are dancing and pulling very strong. And now they go fly back. I don't know whether you could see, but what they do is they, they fly against each other and then fly back such that they can reel in the line without any force. And then they can make you know, their patterns again. What I like about this is that this gives you energy, but it also gives you pleasure. And this is one of the things which I like very much about sustainable and renewable energy. All these things which we do, they somehow more, I would say, more intelligent. They play more with the nature. They are just more fun. And, and, and like this ship, it's much more fun to have the sails rather than have the engine on. And, and I think it's a big, in, in a big ingredient which we should treasure in the future. It is not all about effectiveness, but it is also about pleasure. Here you see a, a result of a study which, um, which was um, done for, uh, for the island of Malta and to make a system of kites which look more like airplanes to give the energy for the island of Malta. Um, kites uh, will not, be, will not uh, stay the same. I mean, we study many different kites, and this are we call kite planes, where we have a kite which starts more looking like an airplane and therefore also is able to make the maneuvers of an airplane. Now, I just said, well, this is supposed to be a course, so I said, well, I'm going to show you some formulas, but I'm not going to explain them much. Other than that, what I want to say is that if this is the wind vector, and if the same way you just have a cable going up to the kite, but you release the cable, there's a certain velocity of the cable, then that cable speed will also give the kite a certain wind against that cable speed. And if you combine those, you get a, a wind which goes a little bit like this here, goes a little bit down. And that's the reason why if you release a kite, the kite will also go somewhat down. 
The reverse is also true. When you reel in a kite, the kite will go up to a very high uh, level. But what is important is that if you look at the quality of a kite, and the quality of a kite is something which is what we call the lift over drag. That is how high the kite stands against the wind. So if you're a bad quality kite, it stands here. If you have a very good quality kite, the line is very steep. But it turns out that if you want to make power with a kite and you would look at the quality, oh sorry, you look at the quality which is here, this lift over drag, then the kite which we now have there has probably lift over drag of about four or five, and the kite which, uh, which is normally flown by, by Rolf will have maybe somewhere around six. Here you see the power which you can get out of a kite, and you see that actually it flattens out very quickly, and it means that to make power with a kite, you don't need such a good kite. In fact, just a very simple piece of cloth already gives you uh, almost the maximum power. This is true when the kite is stationary. But what is interesting is what you have seen and what kite surfers do a lot, is that you start moving the kite. And we call this crosswind. You just kind of, the wind goes in this direction and cross on the wind, you just kind of move the kite. And then the kite, in fact, makes its own wind speed, if you want, and from this own wind speed, you get a lot of extra power. Now, this is what you then do. Here you have the wind, and here you have the kite. But the kite is not, his lift is not going up straight, but it goes a little bit to the side, this little angle, such that it has a velocity, which we call the crosswind, perpendicular to the real wind. And to make it really more nervous for you, you don't have to learn this, but what is important, what this tells, and that's what I'm just going to say, the result, is that the lift over drag, which is the quality of a kite, how stand it up. If you make crosswind, then the lift over drag is getting reduced. In fact, the lift over is going to be reduced by the amount of crosswind which you have. So what happens is that you have a kite standing here, and if you just start to move it, it starts standing there. And if you move faster, it will go lower. So in fact, if you want to go to a high altitude, you have to stand still. If you want to go and have a lot of pulling because of your lower altitude, you have to move. If you move, however, the surface of the kite, the effective surface of the kite starts to become very much larger. I give you an example. Today, now or so, we have about 10 knots of wind relative to the ship, so the kite feels 10 knots of wind. Suppose I would use the kite which uh, has a quality of Rolf's kite, which is about six. The lift over drag, the L over D, is six. Then you could have a crosswind, which is roughly about three. If you take six, it will be all be down, but three times the wind. Look at that. This would be three, which is then squared, is nine. Uh, so this would be nine plus one is ten. So suddenly your kite has an effective pulling force, an effective surface, which is ten times larger. And so you could do a lot with a kite which makes this motion, this crosswind motion. Anyhow, if you have a crosswind motion, then you can also make energy on board of a ship. You cannot only use it for pulling. And then what you could do is use the energy for an electric motor which then drives your, your, your ship. And so the ship could use also maybe go straight against the wind doing this. And this is the project which we, uh, we do with the harbor of uh, Rotterdam, where we got one million euros to, uh, to develop a demonstration of what we see here, using a kite to produce energy and making the ship go straight in into the wind. And in fact, it's really funny with this system because you would go faster if you go straight into the wind than if you go in any other direction. However, in the other directions, you start pulling the ship also, and roughly the idea would give you a way to use kites for ship propulsion independent of the wind direction, and that would usually be, be kind of marvelous stuff. Um, we do further uh, many research on kites, like uh, the aerodynamics on kites. Here you see a, uh, this is an, an ad of a vacancy, <laughs> which uh, in fact has already been filled, so don't, don't apply because okay. we've already got a very nice person, no, who no, just no. <laughs> uh, which is uh, Dr. Roland uh, Schmel. And, uh, but the research was very interesting to do in, the, in, a, in a wind tunnel and look very accurately at what happens with the aerodynamics of the kites. Now, recently we started also to work a lot on 
the control of the kite. How do you control the kite, make it go to the left or to the right? And one of the control ways has been to have a, like a, a, a carriage, a little wagon, which can be remotely controlled with a servo motor to go back and forth on both sides of the kite and therefore do the same as you do with the steering line. And in this way, we were able to con remotely control a kite going to the left and going to the right and really steer it as if you could steer it just by hand. And this, of course, would then open the way to have the kite also at very much higher altitude. Now, this is a nice example which we did in Groningen, where we had a kite producing the energy. And it was on the 28th of August, which is a celebration day of Groningen. And we let a band play on that energy. And it was interesting to see, we, we did this right next to the Gasuni in Groningen, so there were a lot of energy companies uh, who were aware of this. And after this concert, there was in fact uh, zero energy company which approached us, but there were many bands who approached <laughs> us <laughs> because they liked so much the idea. In fact, there was one band who wanted to make a, a festival on the Kilimanjaro and uh, say, okay, we come there with lots of uh, rock bands and we're going to play music and the energy will come from the kites. Just as, uh, and again, you see here, the kite, or in many cases, in more general renewable energies, is not only a matter of replacing fossil fuel, it is just a much nicer future and uh, we should realize that. Now, I will conclude with uh, uh, an answer to what people, very many people will ask is, now how large can you make something like this? Well, the ground station for something would be, which will be 100 megawatt would look like this here. A big winch, of course, because the winch will drive the generator and will just give you the energy. And you can see here, this is a, a, a man, and you can see here what kind of size it is. Now probably if you see this man and you see this cable and this winch here, you think it's very big. But if you compare this with a wind turbine, which is only five megawatt, then this is a 100 megawatt system, then you say, well, it's not big at all. And then you have to also realize that the 100 megawatt ladder mill will give you 70% of the time power, whereas a wind turbine like this, only 25%. Anyhow, I conclude. Uh, this is, was a picture which I took just, uh, I think, around uh, 6 o'clock, where you still see the kite uh, here. And if you don't believe that that is a kite, then this is the close-up. And uh, I, I guess that uh, the kite, uh, we, 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 we go about um, 8 knots at the moment. Seven I think so. Seven so and seven and a half, 4 meters per second. The kite is pulling uh, 400 newtons. So that's 400 to still, uh, so it's 1.6 kilowatt. We get at least 1.6 kilowatt for free at the moment uh, on the ship because of the kite. Thank you.